Good morning, morning guys. We're back at it again with another video. I've had a number of comments and requests to do an update on the uh, Mahindra tractor that we got about two, two and a half years ago. Uh, currently the tractor is sitting at 425 hours on the hour meter um, and it's gone through two services. So Mahindra does the, the first service at 50 hours, uh, which is included in the price of the tractor uh, through the dealer. Um, so that was done free of charge at 50 hours. And then they recommend doing services every 350 hours after that. So the last service at 400 hours, my neighbor and I just said that he's done tractor restorations and you know, he's a gearhead. So um, he's like, nah, you don't, you don't need to take it to the dealer to get, a, to get a service done on it. He was like, let me show you how you do an oil change and let me show you how you do all that so that you can do it yourself and save yourself some money. So my neighbor's definitely been a nice help in that regard there. Also keep in mind that uh, this is the first tractor that I've ever owned in my life. So I can't really compare this tractor to John Deere's or Kubota's or other tractor manufacturers. So this is my own opinion coming from that perspective there of uh, basically a first time tractor owner. So this model of Mahindra is the 1533 HST. Uh, so the 33 and the, and the model number there represents how many horsepower the engine is. The, uh, the power takeoff on this specific model um, if my memory serves me correct, it is 25 horsepower and that number was certainly really important to me when we're buying it um, specifically for some of the implements that I wanted to use with it. Um, the HST stands for the hydrostatic transmission. Um, I've never used a standard transmission on a tractor where you have to like pop the clutch in order to get it to go forward. Basically with this type of transmission, you just put your RPMs up and then there's just a forward pedal and a, and a reverse pedal. And it's very easy in that sense to drive it around and to use it. Something else to know with this tractor is that I don't baby this thing at all. It just doesn't sit nice and pretty in the garage or anything like that. I'm trying to work this thing pretty well as hard as, as, hard as it can go. Um, some notable things that I've done with it is trenching out 400 feet um, for a buried electrical line on our property uh, for our grid tied solar system. Um, you know, I did that in just a few days with the backhoe attachment that goes onto it, which I'll show you guys in a second. Um, and I did that in like 100 plus degree summer heat. So there haven't been any major issues with it, but I would still say that the tractor is still relatively young, uh, considering that I've seen used tractors for sale that have 3,000, 4,000 hours on it. So being at only 400 and uh, 25 hours, um, I would still say we're still breaking it in and it's still relatively new. So some things that I really like about this tractor is I actually really like its size. I like that it's not too big and that it's not too small. I would say for the type of work that I do on our property here, this is a really good size uh, for what we need. So another thing that I really like that it's not obviously specific to Mahindra tractors or anything like that, uh, but something I definitely recommend if you're looking at a tractor, it's getting one with a hydrostatic transmission. So basically all I have to do is bring my RPMs up and if I do that, I go forward. If I do that, I go backwards and that's it. So this is the backhoe attachment that came with the tractor. Um, this is one of the major things that sold me on specifically going with the Mahindra and getting the proper backhoe attachment for it. Um, when I was looking at used tractors, I was looking at used Kubotas and since the, the used Kubotas didn't have uh, the right framing pieces or it didn't have the, the attachment point on the back uh, for the backhoe, um, I was kind of gravitating against getting that because I would have had to have used a three-point backhoe um, which just attaches to the three-point hitch on the tractor um, but this is a much more solid way of attaching a backhoe to a small tractor like that. So these pins here slide into the back of the cradle on the tractor and then you just basically tilt the backhoe up and then you put a pin right through here and it locks it right to the back of the frame and I'll show you what it looks like on the back of the tractor. So those bottom pins sit down right down there and then as you tilt it up, then you can get another pin right up here. So the backhoe is attached directly to the tractor as opposed to doing a three-point backhoe. So the backhoe that came with this is very stable whereas like if I just had a three-point backhoe, you can see how much I can move this on the back and um, for me that just doesn't seem very solid especially if you're going to be doing a lot of digging and having it all rely right on that three-point system. While this may seem like a pretty small backhoe and I, and I certainly agree, um, I would say that the digging force is it's adequate for what I want to do and I have been able to take out some pretty significant root balls and some pretty decent sized trees with this backhoe. Let me show you one that I got 
right up there. So even with how small that backhoe is, I was able to actually take out of the ground um, this mesquite root ball. So this is the tap root. So this is like the base of the tree right here. So you can see it is a pretty significant size root ball, um, especially for the size of that backhoe. And what I found when I'm digging out trees um, and stuff like that, that is really kind of maxing out the capability or the strength of the backhoe is that I just have to do things in a slightly different way um, in terms of how I actually get it out of the ground. So for something like this, where the actual strength of the backhoe just can't rip this thing out of the ground, I gotta go around and use the backhoe to cut off all the roots that are coming out kind of horizontally from it and try to get all those roots knocked out and then I can usually just pick it right up. Um, but these tap roots can certainly be a bit of a bugger. So one of the other major reasons why we wanted the tractor was uh, to get a good PTO wood chipper for it. So with everything that I'm doing from a permaculture sense, having the wood chipper is really nice. Um, just looking at this one, it is the, the Woodmax WM-8H and it weighs a thousand pounds and it requires 20 horsepower from the PTO. So that tractor there, it can lift this up no problem and move it around. And the PTO horsepower is more than adequate to run this guy. So definitely one of the most useful things that we got for the tractor that I absolutely love is the forklift attachment. So especially for moving skids around, um, but also very long material that I can pick up very easily with, uh, with the forks. I also bought an extra 20 inch bucket for the backhoe. Um, the one that comes standard on it, I believe is the 12 inch model. So one last thing that I've recently got for the tractor, but I haven't really talked about it in any of my videos, is the uh, basically kind of like the sun visor or cover for the top there, uh, especially during the summertime. Oh my God, like what a difference it makes having that little bit of shade while you're working on it. So if I'm out digging for like six or seven hours in a day, that thing makes such a significant difference, especially during the summertime when it's 100 plus Fahrenheit out. It has been a game changer for sure. All right, now let's talk about some of the things and some of the issues that I've had with the tractor. So one of the issues that we've had with the tractor, and I don't know if this is common amongst all new tractors and it's just something that just kind of happens with them, but there have been a number of bolts that have vibrated and worked their way right off the tractor. And to me as a consumer, um, I don't know if this is a Mahindra issue um, or if it's an Earhart issue. So Earhart is the, the dealer. So tractors like this, they don't come fully assembled like this uh, when they're delivered to the dealer. They come in essentially like a crate and then they assemble it uh, from there on out. But it just seems to me like none of the bolts should be coming off the tractor because the solution is so simple. It's like if you have a bolt and you're attaching it into threads, the easiest way to make sure that that bolt's not gonna come off is if you get a little bottle of Loctite and just put some Loctite, then that bolt is not gonna be able to vibrate off. I noticed this for the most part when we first got it. Since then, there haven't really been many things that have come loose in terms of the bolts, but there has been one, and it's not a major critical part of it, but it doesn't make sense to me that bolts should be coming off the tractor. So let me know in the comment section if that's something that is common or if that is something that shouldn't be happening. Um, but one thing that it has taught me, I guess there's, there's a good thing that's come out of it, is that I'm constantly looking around the tractor and looking at things just to make sure that there aren't any bolts coming off the tractor. So this little bracket right here has come completely off because one of the bolts here vibrated completely right off the tractor. Um, I don't even know what it actually does other than just hold the throttle cable in place. Um, but yeah, I just don't understand why something like this would just come off. And on the backhoe here, this bolt, this is a major kind of critical bolt um, and it's also loose as well. And I've had a difficult time trying to get it tightened up because I have to use adjustable wrenches and dogs. Um, since I don't have a socket that's big enough for it, I did my best to get it tightened up one day when the backhoe um, was attached to the tractor. So I was having difficulties getting it tightened up, but I also put some Loctite on. But I'm gonna have to take it over to my neighbor's place because he's got some bigger sockets and stuff um, to get that tightened down. But to me, something like this should not be coming loose on the tractor. You know, the, the quick and easy fix is just to put some Loctite on and then you know it's not gonna come loose. So the bolt issue hasn't been super critical, but it could be because there have been times where I've been, you know, walking on our property where I've driven the tractor and I'm just finding bolts and washers just sitting on the ground. And I'm like, 
I don't even know where this bolt came from on the tractor. So like I said, I don't know if that's a, I don't know if it's a Mahindra issue or if it's the guy that assembled this at your heart and wasn't putting Loctite on things. I don't know exactly what it is, but that's just one thing that I've experienced specifically with this tractor. So this rear hydraulic hose, which when I'm using the three point, it just connects back into here. When I'm using the backhoe, I just detach this and then it gets hooked up to the backhoe. Um, but one day I sprung a pretty significant leak in this hydraulic hose. Now when the hose started to leak, it was after a full day of trenching with the backhoe. Um, so all the hydraulic fluid and all the hoses were definitely quite warm and considering it, it was over 100 degrees that day, this hose was definitely quite hot. Um, so I was digging all day with it, I switched it out, um, I put the, uh, the box grater on here and I was just grating around and I looked back and I saw that there was oil, hydraulic oil, all over the box cannon. Now what I think what happened is that the hose was rubbing up against this part of the three-point hitch and somehow sprung a leak or something like that in it and obviously the heat could have played an issue with it as well. But the thing is this hydraulic hose did not have this abrasive cover on it uh, when that happened. So stock with the tractor, this hose cover wasn't on it. After it happened though and I had to pay for a new hose which you might think, oh, a hydraulic hose, maybe that's not too expensive. But to get one made at, the, uh, at Napa for a six foot hose, it was like $70 for a hose. So they're not cheap. So you definitely want to take care of them. So I've gone ahead and added a lot of these abrasive coverings to all of the hydraulic hoses that seem to be quite exposed and are not very well protected. This hose also used to go up through this hole on this bracket here. But when the guy from Earhart came out and did the service on it, I was just telling him, about, telling him about how annoying this hose was coming through this hole. So he just removed the fitting off the end and he's like, screw it, you don't really need it to be in there and just uh, detached it from this bracket here. And then where a lot of the hydraulic hoses come under the tractor here, I've gone ahead and added more of this abrasive covering to all the hydraulic hoses. I really don't want to burst anymore. This one in particular, um, since it's so long, I had to zip tie it up together because it wanted to rub up against this tire here and um, that wouldn't be very good. And so then popping up the hood here, um, one thing that I've had to do is I've had to replace the terminal on the, ba on the positive battery lead here. So it used to be a very kind of thin one like that there, um, but it got corroded really bad. So I had to replace it with a much beefier one. Um, I cleaned all this out not that long ago, probably just about a month and a bit ago. I topped the battery with distilled water, um, but we live in a very dry and dusty climate. So there's a lot of shit that kind of gets in the engine compartment here. So keeping up with the maintenance of cleaning this is definitely really important, um, especially with the air filter as well, because the air filter gets clogged up very easily out of here. So I uh, have to keep that nicely cleaned. The battery lead issue is not really a Mahindra issue, but it's more of just something that I've had to do on the tractor. Just to show you guys where I'm looking at on the tractor here, here's where the oil filter is for the engine. Um, one thing that we notice is that when my neighbor and I were doing the service on this and doing the oil change is that even getting the tool in here to basically get the oil filter out, um, it's quite a tricky position here. Um, so you can see here that we have 730 hours is when we're going to replace. So we did the oil change at 380 hours and that was right before I started doing all the site prep work here. So I wanted to do the oil change before we got into it. Um, but before we did this, what happened was that the oil filter, the previous oil filter um, got a little bit loose over time and it was leaking oil. So we've just had to tighten that up once and we've replaced it once. <laughs> this isn't an issue, but it's something that I've done to the tractor is that the turn signals on both sides, which I, I'll never ever use the turn signals, but I've knocked both of them off. I've knocked that one off and I've knocked the one off on the other side here. And that's just because I was getting too close to trees and limbs and stuff and it just knocked it right off but uh, I don't plan on driving this down the, uh, down the highway anytime soon, so not a big deal. So other than some of those minor issues, which some of them are not even specific to the, to the Mahindra brand, it just kind of comes with the nature of owning machinery like this. Um, other than that, the tractor started every single time, except for one time, and the one time is when that battery, the positive battery leak corroded, I had to swap it out, and then the tractor started right back up, so that wasn't really 
you know, an issue or anything like that, we got it fixed nice and quick. But this tractor does pretty well everything that I want it to do. And I'm not paid by Mahindra. I didn't even get a discount on the tractor. I failed, paid full price for it. Um, so if it was a piece of shit and I didn't like it, I would, I would tell you that. Um, but at the same time, I don't, I don't have anything to compare it to. I've never driven any other tractors. This is my only kind of tractor experience with this here. And so far, so good. It does everything that I want it to do. And that's really what's most important to me. It starts up and it works. And that's always a big bonus, uh, in my opinion. And it's definitely made my life out here so much easier with what it can do. I would definitely say the tractor is the best investment that we have made coming out here, you know, living on a piece of, um, piece of land that is 40 acres and it was completely, like nothing had been done to it, so it was completely native land. Um, it has made my life out here so much easier and it's some of the best money that you can spend is buying machinery like this. Um, if you can't afford a new tractor like this, then I would certainly start looking for used tractors in your area. So I'd follow some of the same steps and recommendations when I was talking about buying the old Ford F-250 that we have. Anyways, guys, if you have any comments or questions, definitely leave them in the box below, and we'll, uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Talk to you guys soon. Peace.